Tuscany. Hallowed lands, high culture, yet there is an underside. And it's here next to the Ligurian Sea where angular meets irregular head on. Clinically carved up marble set against raw, crooked cliffs in a cloud of white powder dust and a red skies seemingly from another world. This paradox exposes the raw beauty of our past, sliced up monumentally from under the crust which it hides, and we ride. It's weird that in lands where beach becomes hill and hill becomes mountain, we find something very special. The Italians have always been good with roads and cars and hijinks on classic routes in films such as The Italian Job, Quantum of Solace, Rabid Dogs and many more. We are in Tuscany. Now you might well associate Tuscany with green fields, rolling hills and perching towns. Ours however is one of lands chopped up, sharp white cliffs and a dark side too. Hell, even James Bond and his Aston Martin DB9 took a beating here in the white dust where Michelangelo quarried his marble for David. Our mission to ride the first ever custom designed road in Europe, the 18th century Via Vandelli, named in honor of the man who conceived it, Domenico Vandelli, the engineer. Still, this road was built by the Duke of Modena and given to his son and the heir of the Duchy of Massa and Carrara as a gift for their wedding. Little did the Duke know that he inadvertently constructed what could well be the ultimate trail for ENTB. Two days of edgy, unruly single track awaiting us. We're here to attempt the final piece of that road, the most difficult to be designed and realized. From Castelnuovo de Garganfana up to Tambura Pass and down into the depths of Carrara, where the world's finest marble is mined. And where Bond, well, he scratched the shit out of that DB9. We began the ride on a tarmac road, then we've transitioned onto this double track. As you can see, the beautiful Carrara marble all around us. I want to come up here on an analog bike, Rich. No, you can't have to put those on my shoulders. Oh, crikey, this is, this is loose. What? Wow. <laughs> yeah, this is e-bike territory. We are here on a mission, and that is to take DI2 into MI6 territory. And this is our chief of intelligence on this trip. We could call him M, but his name is actually Williams, Rich Williams of Ridgeline. He is the leader and as such gets to choose which female or male he goes nose to nose with in the aforementioned asylum, sorry, refuge. But more of that later, let the bedlam begin. <laughs> There's two bikes to talk about on this trip too. One is my Canyon Spectralon 8 featuring Shimano EP801 and manual shifting. An absolute bargain at just over 4,000 euros. Then there's Louis, the filmers, which obviously has the full auto shift and free shift features that only comes with electronic shifting. And of course the Shimano EP801 motor. Both bikes come with Shimano gearing and brakes and great geometry, a powerful drive unit and long range batteries. These two bikes then will be taking us to those otherworldly places where reliability, range and power are key. Oh, and there's Rich on his Shimano EP8 Heckler too. All set then for a rough old day, but a tight night on the mountain with a dozen middle-aged ladies, cabbage and grappa. This is right royal carver. It will be weird.
Meanwhile, back in the reality of our approach, things were warming up nicely. I got a sneaky feeling that we've got a, a physical hour ahead of us. So apparently this track here was built in the 1800s by the King of Modena. Quick history lesson. The legend was is that... And the legend was is that... He had a mistress down on the coast of Massa. Right? He had a mistress down on the coast of Massa. So he charged his army to build the quickest route. So he charged his army to build the quickest route. This is very cool. This is absolute primo e-bike climbing. Yeah. Easiest gear. Look for the lines. So Richard's good on the old trials. Your perfume smells nice today. Thank you very much. Yeah. What is it? Pack or a ban? That's the uh... <laughs> insect repellent. Insect repellent. <laughs> We're basically riding pitched terrain. So it's just the right degree of technicality. Oh, it's just heaven. It's, it's absolute heaven. Oh, I can't imagine the misery that would have been going up through there on an analog bike. Now we spoke a while ago, what's the ultimate bike for a mountain adventure like this? And we think 150, 160 with geometry, which is great for climbing and descending. Now the heart of the bike, this Canyon Spectron, has got a Shimano EP801 on it. And you know what? There's definitely just a bit more oomph in the tank than the previous EP8 and before that E8000. It operates at a wider cadence range. It's got 85 newton meters. And like I said, it's just got a bit more in the tank. I think what some people forget about Shimano Di2 electronic shifting is it's actually not wireless. And I think that's a good thing because you don't have to think about other batteries to charge to enable you to change gear. And when you look at the front of the bike, I mean, it is super minimalist. There's not too many cables because remember that Di2 cable goes inside the handlebar. Very, very neat. This is possibly one of the best EMTV climbs I've ever done. Nice riding. It's not often you actually go out riding with someone who knows how to control the power. Now this man in front of me wouldn't even talk about e-bikes about six years ago. Look at him now. Look at him. He is loving it. <laughs> so <laughs> I wasn't expecting like a five meter push, but a, a minor glitch in what was otherwise possibly one of the finest bit of single track e-bike climbing I know. I've ever done. I think the King of Massa should be proud. He's done a great job. I mean, who'd have thought traipsing an entire army up and down a mountain is going to lead to such e-biking, such good e-biking. It's amazing. It's the perfect mix of nice bits of technicality. You've got the those those moments where you can get your breath back. Yeah. And I think the gradient is just right. It really it? is. It's spot on, isn't it? I mean, you think like what they had to do to build these coming up to crack all like the carts and everything like that. It's just so nice to get there. There's a little bit of steep stuff, which really challenges you where it's a little bit rocky. You have to really work with the bike to kind of bump it up. But then, as you said, you can like relax on this. This gradient's just amazing. It's not too loose. You can kind of just pull up and get to the next challenge yeah. and go from there. You've got to be so careful because the day can become miserable. <laughs> the thing is, you don't actually know what's there until you get there. I remember being on the back of Helvellyn. If we'd done it the different way around, mm. it would have been, we'd have been pushing, pushing e-bikes for two hours. Which is not fun, is it? Not no, fun. But no this, one likes that. <laughs> folks, if you ever get a chance to come to Tuscany to, to uh, Ridgeline in Castel Nuovo del Garganfana. I'll give you that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the one. Cheers. Having wrestled 500 meters vertical, we now believed we were well on our way to Val's place. But now the pitch increases, and so too the technicality. But all is good on the Duke's custom-made EMTB trail. With the battle seemingly won, it still feels like we have arrived. Valhalla. It is every bit a dream world, the Ligurian and Tyrrhenian seas shimmering below. At 1,700 metres, there's not much that needs to be said or done. 
In this hallowed land where soldiers toiled and where kings travelled, we feel we've stumbled across a very special place for EMTB. Time now to shimmy down to the refuge. Give us your rich, fresh mountains, killer mm -hmm. single track, and the Mediterranean. It's kind of got it all, hasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> we're, yeah, we're, we're pretty happy here. That's a long it's pretty climb. pretty sweet, isn't it? Yeah. I reckon, I don't think I've done such a big climb in trail mode. What were you in most of the time? Only trail, yeah. I don't it's think like... you can actually do this stuff on boost because you've got like the duality of all the techie stuff where you've actually just got to play with your weight just to get that grip. With the boost, it's just going to be too much. And then with the rough stuff as well, you've actually got to find that grip as well. So in the boost, it's just going to spin out. So this is a heli pad. Yeah. Do you think an e-bike is the next best thing to a helicopter to get up to this refuge? Hell yes. <laughs> it's got to be, right? <laughs> Without a doubt, come on. Yeah, we've been working with quite a few refugios actually now, and um, they're really starting to get the whole e-bike craze that's coming through, especially like with the tours that we bring through now. So a lot of them have actually started to put charging points outside of the buildings. So it's really expanding what we can do here. It's really great to see them coming on board, actually. Tomorrow is a thousand metre descent. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Whoa. Yeah, it's going to be... Almost single track the whole way down. Have you seen this wall? They've actually built a wall down a cliff. Yeah, so that's not actually a wall, that's a walkway. So that was what? built for those marble blocks that you can see at the top there. This is how they used to get oh, the marble whoa, whoa, blocks down. Oh, you're not walking down there. Yeah, they used to get them slide, slid down there, all the way down all those gradients. They used to have these big pulley systems. They used to lower them down all the way down, see down there? All the way down to the ground. Mental. Check, double check, triple check quadruple check whether your bike is actually charging. I've actually been on a several trips, I hate to admit it. We've had a couple of wines, we kind of wake up in the morning, ah, I didn't hit the switch. Who would do that, eh? So tonight, for me, it's gonna be Coca-Cola and lemon soda. We settled into the refuge as day became night, and in between which, we witnessed a majestic light show transformation of the mountains around us. Secondi, but uh, roast pork, the cabbage, perfect for a night in a refuge. <laughs> Everyone thinks I'm a veggie, do <laughs> No one thinks I'm a veggie. <laughs> oh, me. There's Ridgeline Rich, the man. Uh, there. Responsible. Rich, it looks like you've got a top bunk. It's not often I get to sleep next to a stranger without getting in trouble, so I'm going to make the I mean, most that, of that tonight. I mean, I mean, that, <laughs> it's pretty close, isn't I mean, it? I mean, that is cosy. Louis, you've got to be impressed with this. Yeah. That's literally the extent of your wash kit. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Where do you get that from? Louis, what do you think of the sleeping situ arrangements here tonight? It's pretty cosy in here, isn't it? Uh... Cosy's yours. Yeah, yes, we have fart dome. <laughs> 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 So 
So, without stating the obvious, how was your uh, how was your first night in the refugio last night? <laughs> so it started with the Italians coming in, giggling and chatting after drinking loads of grappa. Then, of course, there was snoring. However, it was just the the weirdest collection of farting I've ever heard in my life. I didn't get much sleep. No, you're right. They knew what they were doing when they were saving his cabbage last night. Rich, I'm not a chat even with this morning, I've got to be honest. <laughs> <you're right. laughs> but what next? Having gently eased out the cabbage, it was now time to huff and puff ever west to the sea. Except, well, this was now full-on downhill business. A fast, mental, fully engaging descent. It was game on. I can't see the rocks. Go oh, on, like that one. I can't see the rocks that you kick out. It's really dangerous. Wow, amazing. Amazing terrain. I'll tell you what, you can really keep your wits about you because if you nudge a rock, you've got a big, big drop on the left hand side here. Obviously, be aware of walkers and you're in these kind of places. A big, mad English slope, like Richard Williams. Nice. Pretty physical. Whoa, savage. Proper savage. This is where you need good brakes. You're doing like long descents where twin pot, twin pot calipers, 200 mil discs. SLX on this bike. Never ending but enjoyable switchbacks became the ultimate test of the Shimano free shift system and taking the guesswork out of our gear selection, a real bonus in such physically demanding terrain. Whoa. You cannot overshoot these corners. I'm just going down this hill thinking as much as Link Glide is three times more durable than Hyperglide. That's primarily for pedaling it. Dirt and muck and sand. But I also think that Link Glide will be quite durable in a nasty rocky terrain like this. Oh, that's a horrible switchback. And he's gone wrong. Oh, and there's the transition onto the tarmac. Makes me happy and sad. It makes me happy because I know that Louis the filmer won't puncture down here. So hopefully you're gonna express up here. All right. Where? Ah. The rocket fuel espresso simply added fuel to an already intoxicating experience. After all, this was about much more than the riding. Although the Duke of Modena should be proud in that the Via Vandelli, this section at least, he's created one of the world's finest EMTB adventure routes. A masterpiece of route building. And Michelangelo, well, he might well have created a masterpiece in David, but it all started here, amongst the rocks, which will one day become revered, reconstructed or reincarnated as statues, we pondered. Bathrooms, kitchens, worktops, oh, and Bond. And so, as the sun sets on the Mediterranean, and allegedly where they shot Quantum of Solace, uh, what a trip, a trip of powder, rock, and firing skies. A trip probably about so much more than just the riding, although the riding itself was pretty damn good. It's pretty good here. I mean, like, the thing is, as you said, like, the, the riding's probably, what, 40, 50% of it. The rest of it's the experience. Being, being up there last yeah. night with that sunset and everything was just incredible. Yeah. And today, the curry plants, the mint, the rosemary. Um, the powder that's, like, that deep, which powder, is that mainly in someone's face. <laughs> and also, the bean stew last night. I'm beginning to feel a little bit thirsty. Hmm. 